Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Lane Side Reviews and on this very special drilling edition we're going to decode the numbers that you see in all of our videos. guys so welcome back as always I am Rob Johnson joined once again by Scoops Porter and today we have Kyle Kenwell from Kenwell's Pro Shops to help us out so when we look out for new equipment and, and how people have laid stuff out inevitably we're gonna find the Greek that's all written over it degrees this and inches that but nobody really ex explains it no and these numbers are very very important the degrees and angles it's makes what the ball does and nobody does take the time so that's why we brought Kyle in today to help us so why don't we take it lane side and take a look at asymmetric layouts all right guys welcome back to asymmetric layouts now I think it's important to take a second here and actually explain what an asymmetric ball is well an asymmetric ball is just based on the core inside of it so you have an odd looking shape one that isn't perfectly mirrored image on both sides. It has a different type of shape on one side and a different type of shape on the other and it creates more of a more gyration. Gyration, a different type of motion within the ball itself. Okay. And it also has, you know, a point where it's closer to the cover stock and one that's actually further away from the cover stock. Okay. Okay, so where would you start with an asymmetric ball? With an asymmetric ball, in order to lay it out properly, you start with taking your pin and drawing a line straight through your pin, right through your mass bias, which is the point on the ball where the core is actually closest to the cover stock itself. Okay, and then what would you do next? From there, we decide going to, from there, we have an angle that's either 10 degrees to 90 degrees. Okay, now that is the very first number that you see in most uh, in drilling any, layouts. In any layout that uses a dual angle system. Yes. Now, why is it important to choose what your angle is? Can't I just put anything down? Well, you can, but it depends on, you know, what motion and what type of uh, transition you're going to get out of the ball. Okay. So Now, transition, for a lot of people out there, they think transition is how the oil changes. But in this circumstance, it's actually where the ball makes its move or starts to make its first move. Yeah, so, makes its first move down. So late. either early roll or late roll or... Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you pick that angle, you're saying that it goes between 10 and 90 degrees. Yep. And depending on where you choose in there, it makes the ball transition differently. Yes, of course. So with, you know, your lower type angles, it's going to transition, you know, quicker. Okay. And with your longer a angles, like, you know, usually you keep it around 70 to 80, I like anyway, and it transitions later down lane. Okay. giving the ball a little bit more length to it. Okay, so the next thing that you do is pick that uh, length. Yeah. What does that mean? The length, basically your length is from your pin to your pap. So, you know, for asymmetric, if you have, you know, a short little pin, about one to two inches to your pap, you know, it's gonna be a low flaring ball. Okay. What that distance is, is gonna control the flare on your ball and, you know, how quick it's going to actually, you know, respond to the lane and how much flare you're going to get over yeah. overall. Now, for those of you who don't understand exactly what flare does, flare is those rooster tails, those oil tracks around your ball. Yep. The more a ball flares, the more fresh surface it sees. So you're getting more friction. So it's going to hook a little bit stronger. So you're saying in, in, a, in a one, you know, zero to two inch in that measurement in that range yeah. will be a low amount of flare so it's not going to have a, a lot of hook there exactly okay yeah and then as you go up about three to four is going to be you know your type kind of medium okay and then four to five you're looking at about max flare for any type of ball uh each ball has its own potential max flare usually okay. the company even says it right on their website or right even on the box okay okay so now we have the another angle yes so this, what's this angle this angle is the angle of which the valve is actually going through your pap. Okay, I gotta stop you for a sec. This is the one that catches me. What is a valve? Vertical axis line. Okay. And what's a pap? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not a beer. <laughs> That's paps. Yeah, <laughs> use one of those. But um, your pap is basically, you know, 
player's positive axis okay. position. And that is unique for every single bowler. Okay. Your PAP is different from Nick's and mine. Okay. And if you don't know what your PAP is, I highly recommend going to your local pro shop and getting them to yes. actually measure you down on the lane so that uh, when your ball is laid out, it'll work best for you. Of course. Now, granted, most pro shops, as long as you, you, know, you go to them regularly, should always have your PAP on file. So as we were saying, uh, the, the valve line. Yes, the valve line. You have, again, another range of angles you're able to use. You have 20 to 70 degrees. Okay. Which is the most you actually should be allowed to play with on any type of ball. Okay. And what does it do? Basically, all the valve does is it's going to, that core we talked about, is going to actually, depending on what angle you use, rotate. You know, when is it going to pick up down lane? Yeah, a lower type angle is going to have the ball, you know, starting to rev itself up earlier, more in the mid lane type area. Okay. And a, you know, further angle toward, towards the 70 will end up having a more delayed rotation and start to pick itself up later down lane. So if the valve number is higher, it's going to have, uh, it's going to take longer for it to spin up. So yes. it's going to have more, more down energy lane. down lane okay. and more of a quicker type of response to it. All right, so I think behind scoops here, we have an HX05 from track laid out. Yes, we do. Now, can you tell me about what the layout, show the camera here, the layout we've got. It's right here. And what do we have laid out on here? On here, we have a oh. 60 degree angle. This looks like our, our typical shot. Yes, actually it is. So our first angle here is 60. So what? So that's our drill angle. Yep. So that means in, in the span of length, is that gonna be a short ball or a long ball? It is going to be a longer than normal ball. Okay. It's a little bit over your midline or midpoint, and it's gonna have a little bit more length than you know a more typical like a 35 or 45 degree angle. So okay. we're looking at maybe 30, 35 feet? Uh, give or take, well, I would say probably about, yeah, 30 to 40 feet, somewhere in there, depending on the cover stock and the core itself. Okay. Now, our next next little number here, we have three and three eighths. Now this is an asymmetric ball, so three and three eighths is you know getting close to more max flare, but not exactly pushing the boundaries either. Yeah. So it's more medium to max. Yeah, and depending on the company, a lot of different companies have a lot of different ideas of what they consider their max flare. Yeah. Uh, and it runs anywhere from three and three eighths inches to four inches. So anything in there is gonna be considered a bit of a max flare. Exactly, yeah. So I mean, there's gonna be a lot of fresh covers touching the lane and it's gonna be a very quick response to the friction and anything down lane. Good. So the next number we have is the vowel line. Yes. Let's talk about that. So right here, we have 40 degree vowel line. So what that ball is gonna do is it's going to pick up later down lane and it's gonna rev itself up around just a little bit past the mid lane for you. Okay, so what we've got here is a ball with a little bit of length, yep. a strong flare, yes. and a medium amount of where it revs up. So yes. this ball isn't gonna be like a hockey stick. No, it's not gonna make a quick jump snap to the pocket. It's gonna be more of a nice kind of smooth type of roll to it. Okay, so if we were to go higher with this number, it would go longer. Yes. Of course. Uh, if we went higher with this number, it would be snappier in the back end. Yeah, it would keep, it would keep its energy more towards the back end, having more of a quicker move. More to violent. It. More violent. Awesome. All right, guys. So why don't we take it to the myth of the symmetric layout? Welcome back, guys. Now we're going to talk about the myth of symmetrics. Kyle, why is it a myth that there's a symmetric ball? Basically, it starts out symmetric. The core inside is symmetric before you drill it. But after you get to the drilling part, it's already now asymmetric because you've drilled into the core and you've changed the shape. Oh, I think one of our favorite people figured that out. Who was that? Yeah, that would actually be Mo Pinnell. Yeah, he's one <laughs> radical dude. And a rocket scientist. Oh yeah. So anytime you put any kind of holes in a ball, you're, you're changing the weight block inside. Yeah, and you're yeah. creating that asymmetry because it's not a mirror of itself. Exactly. Okay, so how is laying out a symmetric ball different than laying out an asymmetric ball? There isn't too much difference. Basically, you have a similar start point. You take your, you know, from your pin, but instead of drawing through a mass bias because there isn't one, you actually drill through your center of gravity or the CG. Okay. And same idea where same you idea pick your from, angles. Yeah, you know, you start with your first angle, which again is going to describe the you know, type of transition you're going to get out of the ball. Okay. And from there, you again go back to your pin to pap distance, okay. which will control your flare. 
Now, the pin to pap distance in symmetric balls works a little differently. It does, actually. It, um, it has a sh not a shorter type of range, but it, its range will actually, you know, start from, you know, one to about four. Okay. And that's going to be, again, you have from low, low flare to, to high. Okay. To basically the max flare on the ball again. And then from that point, it actually goes back down to six and three quarters. So it gets weaker, it gets weaker when you're if, past four. Yes. Okay. So, you know, you put a ball at four, that's your max flare on a symmetric ball. Okay. Now I think we have a, a symmetric ball laid out here. There we are. It's the Arson Hybrid we're using today. All right. So show the camera here. I think we've laid this out almost identically yep. to our asymmetric ball. Exactly. So we've got our 60 degree drill angle, putting yep. it a little bit farther down the lane. And then again, your three and three eighths pap, which is a little bit shorter than the max flare. Okay. But you're still gonna get, obviously, a very heavy flare out of this ball. Okay. And then you know our third angle here, 40 degrees, and that's just going to again tell you where the ball is going to start picking itself up and making it rev later down lane. All right. So for those of you who are watching our videos and seeing other people's layouts, remember the three numbers. Your transition type or transition length being your first angle. How much flare, how the ball's gonna react, is it gonna be smooth or snappy? Is it gonna be the length? And then your val angle, which is gonna be how much energy it's gonna have and when it's gonna start to spin up. So until next time, guys, I'm Rob Johnson. This is Scoops Porter and Kyle Kenwell, <laughs> and we'll see you lane side. This program sponsored by Turbo Driven to Bowl. For all the quad two inserts and switch grip interchangeable thumbs we use in all of our videos. Dexter Bowling Shoes. The world's most advanced bowling shoe, the SST8. Kenwell Pro Shop. Bags, balls, shoes and accessories for the betterment of the game. And Bowlerama Berry for the lanes we film on.